Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I want to do a fun video that I've been thinking about doing for quite some time and it is a top six candles of 2022 from Bath & Body Works that I was either wrong on or that I changed my mind on. So I think as humans, it's important to realize that we aren't perfect. So we are indeed allowed to change our opinions if we want to or admit that we made a mistake. Um, you know, I, it might take a, a hit in terms of my credibility that I put out a review once that said one thing and then I changed my opinion on it later. But I'd rather be somebody who was mature enough to admit that I make a mistake and own up to it or, you know, admit that I changed my mind. I think as humans, we are allowed to change our preferences and you might realize that one thing that you didn't like before, you like now and vice versa. So I think it's totally fine to do that. I'd rather have an ego that is flexible enough to, you know, change my mind and admit to that on camera then like the alternative would be to like dig your heels further into the ground and be stubborn about something and not admit to something that you knew was either wrong or different or you know that you made a mistake and just let that completely escape by and like further entrench your position into being stubborn and like hating or liking a candle just because that's what you said the first time. So I would rather take the alternative, which is to admit that I have changed my mind on something. So that's what today's video is dedicated to. At the end of the day, of course, like we are all independent thinkers, so we are indeed encouraged to go out and smell the candle and make the, you know, judgment for yourself as to whether or not you like it. But even in these candles, I feel like my original candle review is still objectively uh, I don't, I don't want to say correct, but objectively true in the sense that I still describe the candle objectively in the way that I smell it, but it's the opinion on whether or not I like the candle that is subjective and that can change whether or not I liked it or I didn't like it, but still the description of the candle still stands, so I think it's still fine, and you know, it's not like every single candle I change my mind on. This is only six out of the many that we reviewed in 2022, so if you don't like it, well then, you know, you're welcome to go see another channel, and you're of course always encouraged to think on your own, so... With that disclaimer out of the way, let's get right into the video. So number six is a candle that I don't own anymore. I kind of like burned it and was one and done and I don't need to hoard it, but if it came out again, I would entertain repurchasing it and it is number six, Beach Weather. It is actually indeed coming out for the springtime in that perfumer's collection. The notes on this read sun-dried sandalwood, island coconut, breezy palm trees, and crashing waves. So this one was kind of weird. Normally when you think of beach weather, you think of something that's more like suntan or floral or like heavily coconut. But this was weird in the sense that it smelled really like dirty and gritty and sandy. And without the beautiful floral notes that we to like usually get in like something like sea salt and neroli that has a beautiful orange blossom or neroli note, you didn't really get that. It was more so just like if you took sand and sandalwood and like shoved like dirt and sand on it, it was just like nuzzly and gritty and sandy. And at first I was just like, this is so weird. It just kind of like smells like dirty outside sandiness which I, I, I enjoy being out in nature so that's not the worst thing ever but it was just weird for my house to smell that way and there was also a distinct saltiness in there as well I believe at one point someone said that it might be a repackage of some type of Joe Malone fragrance or a dupe of a Joe Malone fragrance I'm not totally sure but it's like this salty sandy dirty sandalwood fragrance and you guys know I don't really like sandalwood either so that was kind of like points against it um, and so initially in the review I was just like I really don't enjoy this one and I was like, yeah, I'd rather have a tropical floral. But the more and more I burned it, I like kind of grew to appreciate what it was in the sense that it was like this sort of like, it was still clean, but salty and dirty at the same time. And it was just like a refreshingly strong, salty, like palette cleanser of a fragrance that didn't belong to any other like fragrance category that I normally own. So like normally I have heavy florals or bakery, uh, but I don't really gravitate towards dirty, sandy, salty fragrances. So it was nice to have that in my house. And it just like, it just was really nice into like the spring and summertime. And it did kind of evoke, I guess, being at the beach. So I enjoyed it for that. So number six on our list was beach weather. Number five is Blue Sky Breeze, and that's what that is right here, and that's what that looks like. This was also in the spring collection, uh, like Pink Lilac and Vanilla, Honeysuckle Peach Spritz was also in this, Black Cherry Seltzer, I believe. Uh, this one reads, Morning Spring Air, Fresh Violet Petals, Crisp Gala Apples, and English Ivy. So I normally don't like these type of clean laundry fragrances, but I think last year was the year that I finally like, turned a corner on it because they kept shoving so many laundry fresh clean fragrances at us that I was like, okay, well, let me like try them and see if I can get into it. And this one was all right. I think in this review, I also said that it was kind of like basic and just like a clean, fresh fragrance that I feel like I could kind of get anywhere. Like it could be like a Febreze candle at Walmart and I would believe it. And that still pretty much like remains the same in terms of my opinion, but there was something so immensely strong about this that I appreciated how strong it was. And there's a 
slight sweetness from the apples in there that it gives it like a slightly sweet uh, like clean linen like fresh clothesline type of feel to it that I really enjoyed and I think I like that there was a little bit of floral a little bit of apple but then a lot of the like uh, clean laundry fragrance that I still like grew to appreciate what it was and I think the fact that the fragrance was so strong is what I really enjoyed about it it burned great it had like the core wicks on it that do suck but if you trim them they were manageable and it was just like it just does great every single time and it's like super strong and like to the point that I sometimes get a headache from it so I was like okay this is this is nice when I just want something really clean and fresh so blue sky breeze right there Number four on our list is a fall candle, and it is Autumn Chai right here. And this is another one where I still stand by the original review in terms of what it smells like. I said it was like a generic, cozy cinnamon fragrance in the vein of, like, that cinnamon ginger sap fragrance that we've had before. And there was a weird, like, yeasty, donut-y, like, campfire donut texture to it that still is in there that I still can't quite like pinpoint what I'm smelling from that but this is cinnamon chai french vanilla froth and smooth caramel uh this one did great too it had the thick rope like wicks it so it did like crazy uh but you can see it didn't dud out which was nice it did get black and, black and smudgy this one's actually almost done because I've been like burning it so much during the fall time I think with a lot of these candles they come out during the summertime so you're kind of like not in the mood for it when you're reviewing it when it first comes out so then it becomes a little bit more palatable when the weather changes and it actually does get cool here which is for a very limited amount of time so so I, I started burning this much later on. Uh, but yeah, this one still is kind of basic and it still doesn't totally evoke a chai fragrance to me. Forever and ever will the Yankee Candle, I think vanilla chai fragrance be number one in my book, although you couldn't really smell it because it's Yankee Candle. That one had that beautiful ethnic floral quality of like an exotic chai. Um, but this is that like sort of like creamy, milky, like not so exotic chai that I don't love as much. But when I kind of like put that aside and just enjoyed it for the sort of like the basic cozy warm cinnamon creamy frothy but also weird campfire donut yeasty fragrance that it was I was like okay I can kind of get into this and it's just nice to have like this sort of baseline creamy cinnamon frothy fragrance going that was just nice as just like a neutral cinnamon fragrance that I could burn during the fall time so actually really grew to enjoy this one uh it was burning great and then it also threw quite well much more as I started burning it so I did enjoy autumn chai right there so number three on our list is going to be one that I don't have anymore. It was another one where I just burned through it. I was done with it and I was over with it. Uh, but then like when, it, when I was finishing it, I did really enjoy it. And if it did come out again, I would most certainly repurchase it. But so the only thing that I have is a wallflower cap of it right here, which I will smell to reference. Uh, and this is Honeysuckle and Peach Spritz. I literally just bought this wallflower a few days ago at the semi-annual sale. For some reason, they re-released uh, this as a wallflower during the semi-annual sale. And I already have it plugged into my bathroom and I'm just like loving it. I'm I'm like, oh my gosh, this fragrance is actually quite juicy. Uh, and like, once again, I don't really love peach fragrances from BBW, but this one's one that I can kind of get on, get on board with. I do have to say the Prosecco and Peaches fragrance, which I think is that Weekend in Rome or whatever that's out right now, is vaguely similar to this, but I still prefer this one because it is a tad more unique than the Prosecco and Peaches candle. Uh, so this one read Honeysuckle Blooms, Juicy Peaches, and Orange Zest. Uh, yeah, this one was strange because I was expecting something that was uh, very heavily floral uh, because when you hear honey Honeysuckle, you of course want something that's floral and I was hoping for like this beautiful honeysuckle floral fragrance mixed with a little bit of peach but this is mainly peach with just something like a bubbly floral fragrance kind of in the background that kind of reminds you of like a Prosecco or a spritz or some type of a drink that's like has a fizzy effervescence from that orange zest in there uh, mixed with heaps of that bubbly peach as well and then lastly there's a little bit of like this weird like slightly air freshener smelling floral chilling in the background but it's also extremely buttery as well and I don't quite understand why it's so buttery and my review also still stands on this one too in terms of what I described it smell like it's like I still completely agree with the way I described it it's just I actually now kind of enjoy it rather than saying that it's like ho-hum or whatever but yeah there's a butteriness to it but I like the weird butteriness and I like the weird like uh like air freshener or floral that's chilling in there mixed with like the peach and the bubbliness and it's just like a unique weird blend that I wish it had a stronger floral note to it, but I kind of once again enjoyed it for what it was. And the more I burned it down, it, I think it did great and it was strong too. So I really enjoyed it. So I'm like loving the wallflower to pieces right now. So I will enjoy the one wa wallflower I have in my bathroom. But that was also available, I believe, in body care, which I did not pick up. So that was number three, Honeysuckle and Peach Spritz. Number two is actually to no fault of my own because the lid on this is so friggin' rancid that it would turn off most people, but I finally gave it a chance when I saw it during candle day, and it is blueberry cotton candy right here, and that's what that looks like. Uh, so this one says, ripe main blueberry, sponge sugar, and vanilla. 
And this is still so weird and so rancid on cold. I, there's just something so strange about this. I don't know if it's a lid or if this is just smells weird on cold, but it's fine when it's burning. But this lid and the cold combo just smells like friggin' garlic butter ranch, like, like dipping sauce from like Papa John's or something. Like so, so immensely buttery and garlicky and ranchy all at the same time. It's really off-putting that I picked this one up so many times, so many times, and it still smells so weird. I want to say the single wick that I smelled during SAS uh, was a little bit better and not so garlic butter ranchy. So there's that. But this one actually, it doesn't burn the greatest. It kind of has like a slow, like nubby burn on it. But the fragrance is fine when it's burning. And I absolutely love it. I think this is pretty much the Blueberry Sugar Pancakes Body Care fragrance, which is like this super creamy, juicy blueberry fragrance that has like a slight, like almost like a caramel vanilla lacing to it um, that makes it even more sweet. Uh, and it's like very much like a very buttery, warm, blueberry, sweet candy fragrance is what I get from it. Uh, it's, I can't quite say it's cotton candy because it's a little bit more warmer than cotton candy, I, I think would imply, but it's still like a candied sweet blueberry fragrance and it's just, it's really juicy. It really smells like that blueberry sugar pancakes body care. And if you mix this with marshmallow fireside, oh boy, is it delicious too. Cause then you get like a, like a smoky, uh, vanilla quality to it that gives it like a marshmallow depth to it. This and Marshmallow Fireside are divine, but I still really enjoy this even on its own. It's not the super strongest fragrance, but I still get plenty of satisfaction out of it in a smaller bedroom. So blueberry cotton candy. But once again, this was because the lid was absolutely rancid and it, it smells still very rancid and vile on cold. But once I go to burn it, it's it's really nice for some reason. I don't I don't understand the magic behind that. So that was blueberry cotton candy right there. And lastly, number one on my list is Salted Caramel Pretzel right here. So this is not by any means a new Holy Grail fragrance for me or up there with Pink Petal Tea Cake, but I feel like it was the one where I kind of was like really grody about it at the beginning. Uh, but then it was so nice that I actually bought a second one of it when I found it. So that is indeed Salted Caramel Pretzel from that like uh, weekly candle drop collection, as you can see right there. Uh, this one says freshly baked soft pretzel, brown butter, caramel, and sea salt. So I still, whoa, stand by this uh, description, like as I described it objectively in the review, but it's just now that I do, I guess, appreciate or enjoy the fragrance, whereas before I was just like, oh, this is kind of grody. This is still so immensely buttery, and that was my main qualm with it. It was just like a vat of butter, and I was just like, oh, like, I'm just gonna gag at how much butter is being like shoved down my throat right now. Uh, and so it kind of had those vibes, and it still does. But it, like it was just so strong and awesome and juicy that I like kind of started to appreciate it and I liked how like unique and authentic it was to like a soft pretzel that really had like heaps of butter all over it mixed with like a slight caramel saltiness. But you even get like a very distinct like whatever the salt is that's on top of like the big hard like uh, salt chunks that are placed on top of the pretzel. You get just the authenticity of that mixed with that exact like pretzel dough fragrance and the butter and then just a slight sweetness from the caramel. I enjoyed how authentic it was and it was just such a strong powerhouse fragrance. It was just one of those like super iconic like in your face, explosive, almost obnoxious bakery fragrances that BBW is known for. It's so, like Berry Waffle Cone, Summer Boardwalk, Pumpkin Pecan Waffles. They're like so strong and obnoxious uh, that at first I might be turned off by it, but there's a a charm or endearing quality to how obnoxious and over the top bakery some of these BBW candles are. And this was one of them. And yeah, I don't know. I just, it burned great down to the bottom. It was strong. And I just like really started to enjoy for how like authentic and I guess strangely authentic and buttery and salty it was all rolled up in one. And so I really enjoyed it. So that was salted caramel pretzel right there. And that was number one on our list. Uh, let me know if there were any candles that you changed your mind on. I think obviously because I review candles publicly on a channel, like people can wag their finger at me and be like, oh, but you changed your mind on that. Whereas uh, most of my viewers are probably enjoying their candles privately. So you don't have somebody in your face telling you that you changed your opinion or anything. But there's of course nothing wrong with changing your opinion opinion or admitting that you were wrong at one point. So this is a video in honor of that concept. So let me know if there were any candles that you changed your mind on in the comments down below and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.